uh, health care was always something in, uh, that was of importance to both of us. And uh, the volunteers in medicine just sort of caught everybody's imagination. And this was um, something that the whole community bought into. And so it just grew from there. Carolyn is a marvel. She was and is a woman ahead of her time. Her good judgment while on the city council, her advocacy for human rights, her interest in the arts, her interest in uh, the foundation and volunteers in medicine, and her unflagging support for her husband and his efforts uh, made them a dynamic duo. Uh, she was always um, so lovely and engaging and you know passionate about the community passionate about her family um, and that's what I've always loved about her she's she's just a really caring lovely person uh, we were in politics and uh, and she were in on one ticket and I ran on the other ticket and uh, I always felt that the community is very lucky if she had hadn't been involved we wouldn't be where we are today even though she was obviously a party of mine, I was always hoping that she would win uh, because uh, we needed her. She was willing to give in the time and she wasn't afraid of anybody. I think almost anything good that was going on in the community Carolyn was involved in. Uh, she was an early uh, advocate for um, inclusion, um, often addressing uh, issues that weren't necessarily popular, but always interested in, um, in what, was, what was right, what would promote the good of the community. He was a person that um, was very self-reflective, in intellectually curious, and somebody that uh, basically was supportive to the nth degree, hugely successful. But Howard didn't look at the success aspect of it, uh, you know, the, the physical and the monetary success. He just looked at the, at the success of encouraging people to grow within their jobs and giving them the leeway to do that. It was part of his core being that he would be involved in, in uh, and helping others and and then he would find ways where his experience and expertise could really be used. I, th I think both Carolyn and Howard had a real um, concern for you know for the whole community so uh, you know so it is interesting when you look at the things they chose to be involved in there's a breadth of things there so um, they were involved in arts organizations, they were involved in social service organizations, Carolyn was involved in the government. So they were really trying to help all the community, not just the things they would personally use. One good deed led to another good deed, led to another good deed that led to volunteers in medicine. She was involved in one of the early leadership Bartholomew County groups that explored healthcare needs in the community. Uh, Carolyn was also involved in the grassroots effort uh, to survey community citizens about what they felt local healthcare needs were. And we had all kinds of thoughts about it ahead of time, like, oh, we need something close to us, or we need transportation that'll get us there. And that's not what the majority said. And, and Carolyn ferreted this out of all the conversations that were, that were held. Dignity and respect is what they really longed for in that setting. And so that became uh, a, a byword as we were developing what kind of clinic this would be. You know, I think Howard recognized there was a disadvantaged group who in many ways were productive members of society they were working, but they were folks without medical insurance. The Volunteers in Medicine Clinic was an opportunity to, on a regular basis, ensure that those folks 
had consistent medical care that they really didn't have access to from any other source. And Howard recognized that that was a critical piece of the infrastructure here in Columbus. Well, one thing that I remember about Carolyn was just her genuineness in the clinic, in her approach to patients. She worked at the front desk in the clinic, which was the front line for patients. And Carolyn always had a warm greeting, a smile, uh, yet she was very efficient about conveying patient needs. But there was a warmth and a genuineness about her and her approach to patients. One of the other significant contributions that Carolyn made was being a member of the Reverse Raffle Committee. She was part of a group that uh, dazzled the community with new ideas, creative ideas, and made the Reverse Raffle one of the most successful fundraising events in the history of the Columbus community. Primary interaction with Howard was on the investment committee. Howard was a, a great manager of people, but he also had a very specific interest in finance. You know, Howard was a, a traveler, he understood the world, and as a result, he continually challenged us to consider alternative investments. And by doing so, we had access to alternative investment managers uh, in a number of sectors that alone we wouldn't have been able to invest in. Howard joined the Hospital Foundation Board as well as the Volunteers and Medicine Board. And I followed Howard on both of those pursuits and attempted to continue the fine work that he had contributed to each of those organizations. His primary role on both organizations was one, leadership. He had, a, he had this uh, appetite for listening, being very well versed in the agenda issues, and then contributing. He did it well. Very quiet, very thoughtful, um, but powerful. And that legacy lingers and is perhaps why I'm still involved in these activities. I think the challenge for this community as we go forward is to recognize that many of the companies that were here, many of the families that were here, many of the individuals such as Howard and Carolyn no longer live here. And so we must pick up the opportunity to say, what can each one of us do? What is our time, talent, or treasure? And how can we give back in ways that continue the legacy of life such as Howard's and Carolyn's? It, it has to come from within, and it's satisfying. It, it expands you. It's something spiritual. It's something that you just do.